Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here. The voice of hardcore boxing. And that's right, hardcore boxing. For hardcore fans, none of you casuals. I don't want none of you casuals watching my channel, I don't want you near me. You all ran for the hills when Big Doss of Femi got beat, didn't you? Hey? I'm just looking at all these comments here on Barbershop channel you know the guy who sticks it to Eddie Earn. I see Macho FC is starting to creep back on their bot accounts back into the system the boxing system I call it hey Eddie must be offering some good ticket deals to win you all back over right you know what time of the month it is don't you hey you know what time of the month it is it's Helmets of the Month on Porky's Corner. Pound for pound Helmets of the Month. The top 15. Here we go. Are you ready, boys and girls? Are you ready? Hey? Eh? It's July the 31st. And it's time for Helmets of the Month to go out. August the 1st, 6 p.m. Here we go. In 15th place, in 15th place, the one, the only, Barry Hearn, a.k.a. Whiskey Nose. Old Whiskey Nose, Bazza. Hey, The silence from Bazza. In the last week has been golden. Silence is golden, golden. <laughs> so Baza is very silent. Hey, why is Baza silent? Normally he's got plenty to say for himself, hasn't he? He had plenty to say for Tyson Fury with his drug tests and Jarrell Miller when they threw him un under a bus. <laughs> So Barry Hearn, you are Helmet of the Month, rank number 15. People have been lobbying for you to be ranked a lot higher, Barry, but you didn't get that many votes because you've been quiet, haven't you? Now, when you're quiet, when you're quiet, you're not, getting, you're not adding fuel to things, and that's a matchroom weapon that they use over the years isn't it but here's where it is isn't it in 14th place he's there again i'm afraid you've got it spencer oliver now some of the things that i've seen this man come out with regarding just what's right and what's wrong in boxing is unbelievable but the silence from this man is pure gold Hey, there's no silence from Glenn McCrory, is there? Because he's not paid by Sky now, is he? But Spencer Oliver, his pal is. Spencer Oliver suffered a brain injury and had to give up his boxing career. And the fight at the time that were being talked up was Spencer Oliver against Prince Nazim Ahmed. And Spencer Oliver had the style to beat Naz at the time. He were red hot. Now... Naz were a protected fighter at that time, but it would have been a great fight. So Spencer Oliver knows about boxing injuries in the ring. He has not said a fucking word. Not said a word about this drug test. Why not? Because they're getting paid by Sky. They don't want to rock the boat, do they? Eh? They don't want to rock the boat. But, uh it is what it is isn't it so spencer oliver you are a pound for pound helmet of the month on porky's corner for july 2019 you helmet with jug ears in at number 13 the one and only bearded wonder frank smith with the spots execute them frank <laughs> Just make sure, Frank, when you pop them, that you clean the fucking mirror. 
All right. Personally, when I was your age, Frank, how old are you? About 12, 13, I used to use Biactol. Everybody at school used Biactol. We used to nick it from chemist in Edlington. But, yeah, I'm afraid, Frank... I'm afraid that you are helmet number 13. For the simple reason, in Dallas, people have complained about you when Barbershop put you on the spot. You were there flying the flag for Joshua. You're still rimming Joshua, aren't you, aren't you Frank? Smug. Smug as out saying we're the biggest promotional company in the world. Smug. And that's why people don't like Frank Smith. He's a smug little cunt. He's heading for a fall. But he's an hard worker and you can't knock that. But he's a helm he's been voted helmet of the month, number thirteen on Porky's Corner. So Frank Smith, you're a fucking helmet, do one. Number twelve Rob Tebbert. Rob Tebbert, you've had many chances, many to go and interview Eddie Earn in the last week. You've gone nowhere fucking near him. Why's that? Why aren't you on a plane to Dallas? Any other time you would be, Rob. You've nowhere. You've been nowhere fucking near Eddie Hearn, Dillian White, none of them. And when you did put something out on your channel, you put a little fucking pinned text on your YouTube channel to say this is not a slight against Dillian White and we're not holding anything against him, blah, blah, blah. For fuck's sake, for, uh, Rob, he's failed the test. And he's been swept away. And you're there thinking about your fucking poxy little fucking job. Get and ask the proper questions. If anybody out of this lot has got a problem with me, they can come on phone. And we can do an interview. And I'll fire some questions at you. Anybody's got a problem, anybody, even boxing hardcore fans or even all you trolls out there who keep sending me messages on email. If you've got a fucking problem, come on the channel. I'll give you a phone number to ring. You can ring it. Come on the channel and we can talk. It's as simple as that. That's what grown-ups do, but Rob Tabbitt wants his cake and eats it, eats it. They all want to have views, but when any one of these people with views fucks up, they don't want to report on it. Like, none of the fuckers said a word about Billy Joe, did they? When Billy Joe were running amok in Sheffield, not one of them said a word when they had the chance. Not Michelle Phelps, not Coogan... Not Rob Tebber, fucking none of them. Because they need a select, there's a select band of people. There's about 18 to 22 people in boxing. 25 maximum, but some are abroad. They need them for view. You take them people out of the equation, these people don't have a fucking income. They're not in it for boxing, they're in it for money. They're not in it for love at sport. Come on. Fucking get with it program. Rob, Rob Tebber at Boxing Social. You're a helmet. Number 12. Porky's Corner. Pound for pound helmet. For July 2019. Now fuck off. In at number 11. Coogan Cassius. You've slipped out at top 10 Coogs. In number 11. For simple reason Coogan. You've had the, op you've had the opportunity haven't you? The complaints I've had in the last few days have been unbelievable. The silence from Coogs. Coogs, man of the people. He's golden. You've been nowhere near Hearn. Normally you're hanging around his doorstep. Come on, Coogs, you can do better than this, mate. You're supposed to be a pioneer. You're a pioneer for YouTubers in England. Coogan, you're supposed to be flying flag. Ten year at your job. And you've been nowhere near the biggest story ever. A boxer failing a drug test and being cleared to fight morning of the fight. And you are nowhere near with your fucking cheap camera. Eh? Come on, Coogan. You can do better than this. You're a very good interviewer. You're good at your job. You're very patient. You're hard working. But you are nowhere fucking near. Come on, you've got sponsors to keep happy. Sometimes, if you want to be a hardcore journalist and earn all this money and do good things, you've got to see other side at coin. You've got to ask questions that you don't want to ask. This is why you can't overstep the line in sport. You've got to be impartial. 
Coogan is not impartial. He makes out he's, he's neutral, but he hasn't been neutral, has he? He may be the number one man in the sport for this job, but he's let fans down. He's let me down. I were a fan of Coogan's. Dennis always bigs him up. I were a bit unsure about him at first, but he's an hard worker and he's stuck it out. But come on. He's bottled it this week. Bottle job. It's like Arsenal going for a league title. They bottle it at Christmas. So, Coogan, number 11, pound for pound, helmet of the month, Porky's Corner, July 2019. In at number 10, Ed Robinson, Sky's production man, friend of Adam Smith. Public school, Ed Robinson. Well, what can you say about Ed Robinson? Privately educated, very nice man. He even came to Cunningsborough. I met him on the off the train in Cunningsborough. Took him out for a drink in Cunningsborough, then blasted him down motorway at 120. Back to his hotel in Sheffield the night before the Senchenko Brook fight. Nice guy, drinks whiskey. He wasn't keen on Iltop Hotel in Cunningsborough, which is owned by Steffi Bull's cousin. Uh, what can I say about Ed Robinson? Well, I know somebody that pulled him about it this week, about the drug issue, and he couldn't comment. And uh, that person's commented, and a couple of his pals did. They've all battened up the hatches, haven't they? They're all thinking about themselves. So, what can you do? It's embarrassing. And Ed Robinson should know better. And he's a big advocate of anti-drugs campaign. He's dead against it. And I am as well. But at the end of the day, nothing from Ed Robinson. Pure silence. So Ed Robinson, you are pound for pound. Number 10, helmet of the month on Porky's Corner. Jog on, jogger. In at number 9. Hey, baby. Hey baby, let me whisper something into your ear, baby. Anthony Bellew, down at number nine. Why is that? Because silence is fucking golden, isn't it? Anthony Bellew, the disappearing man that's never beat a champion. Hey, four pay per views and never took a belt off a champion. Anthony Bellew. The contradiction, the fraud, that is Anthony Bellew. You are Helmet of the Month, pound for pound number nine for Porky's Corner, 2019 July. Jog on, la. In at number eight, the one and only, flat cap wearing, sheep sheepskin coat wearing, Dell, boy, bad boy, Chisora. The man who likes to put women over his knee and smack their bum very hard until blood comes up and gets community service. The one and only woman beater, Derek Chisora. What can I say about Derek Chisora? Well, he looks stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. It looks like Derek's had all his spinach. Bloody hell. Hey. Eh? Last time out against Gashi... Derek didn't look so good, but since then, Eric has eaten a banana. He has become Banana Man. No, we're not on about Eric from Acacia Avenue turning into Banana Man. We're on about Derek Chisora eating all his milkshakes and all his protein drinks from David Hay. Derek Chisora half kills Spilker. He looked like a different man, didn't he? He had muscles on top of muscles, less body fat. He looked great, didn't he? So I'd rather him take it out on Spilker, though, than some eight-stone bird, wouldn't you? But it is what it is, isn't it? We're just keeping it real. We know what Derek is, so as long as we know, it's all right, don't we? In at number seven is Johnny! He's there, isn't he? He's always got to be there, hasn't he? But silence this week from Johnny Nelson. Not a fucking peak. Not a peak from the Nelson. Hey, Here's Johnny! Where's Johnny Nelson? Why isn't Johnny saying anything about the biggest scandal in sport? 
We've got Dillian White here, a world class fighter. Who's beat Parker, a former champion. He's beat Brown, a former champion. He's WBC mandatory for Wilder's belt. Former British champion. He's knocking everybody out and he's in wars and it is exciting. And he's had four pay per views. And here's Johnny. Well, Johnny's not said a word, so all we've got to say on that one is Where's Johnny? Well, Johnny's number seven pound for pound helmet for July 2019 on Porky's Corner, aren't you, Johnny? In at number six, Penfold, Dave Caldwell, Mr. Penfold. Hey, eh? you know why Penfold's in, don't you? Because nobody sees him for weeks, do they, after a loss? And then once he has a win, which is aura. We can't get rid of him, can we? We cannot get rid of Penfold. He's just got to be there, hasn't he? He has just got to be there. So at number six, Dave Penfold Caldwell, the most distrusted man in South Yorkshire. He is not to be trusted with money or with your missus, let me tell you. So it is what it is. Jog on, Caldwell. In at number five, Mr. Bean! Bean! Rudder Bean! Coulda been, shoulda been, never been, fucking baked bean! Where you been? Adam, Mr. Bean Smith, the spin doctor, rumple fucking stilt skin! Just tell us where Madeline is, Adam, please. Adam Smith, number five, Helmet of the Month, July 2019. Porky's Corner, you know it. Fuck off, Adam. In at number four. I thought he would be higher, but I kind of feel sorry for him for because, because I think he's took bad advice. That's what I think. I think he's took bad advice. In at number four, the body snatcher, Dillian White. What can we say about Dillian White? World class fighter. World class trainer, Mark Tibbs trains him. World class cut man, Jimmy Tibbs. World class left duck. But he's made a few wrong turns in his career. He's took bad advice. He took bad advice with an over the counter supplement, a pre workout drink. Bad advice, two year ban. He didn't listen then to good advice. And he's took bad advice ever since then regarding fighting for a world title. He's not Pulaf eliminated back. He's not the Joshua rematch back at Wembley in front of 90,000 for millions of pounds. He's not the Wilder fight back, apparently. He's now manager for Wilder, but he's took bad advice yet again and he's taken something. And I personally think that he's trusted somebody. I'm hearing, it, I'm hearing that, but I also personally think that as well. He has trusted somebody, and that person's giving bad advice. And I feel for Dillian White here because he's fighting for his career. And let's hope he pulls through. But if he's taken this supplement on the advice of somebody, I want to know who's giving him that advice. That person has got to come out and say, I gave him the advice to take it. Or if he's been spiked... Was he spiked? I don't know, but if he was spiked, he's responsible for the people around him, isn't he? So, they've got to get to the bottom of it. We want to know who's giving him it, or who spiked him. Because I don't believe Dillian's took it. Or if Dillian's took it, is he going to come clean? Either way, it's not looking good for the body snatcher. Who's fought his way up from zilch, from being a doorman... So WBC number one mandatory for the best title in the whole world, baby. He's gone 10-0 with Mark Tibbs with five knockouts. Yep, he's had life and deaths with Chisora two times. And Parker and Rivers. But he churns out the wins. He finds a way. But he's been voted pound for pound number four this month. On Porky's Corner. In at number three. The one the only. Lufa Vandross. Dean. Babyting White. Well what can we say about Lufa? 
He does keep it real, and I'm warming to him. Even though he gave me a phone call that I wasn't happy about before the White Parker fight. But because I said it weren't pay-per-view and saying I'll take your money out man's pocket. Well, if I was, I do apologise for that. But in my opinion, it, was, it wasn't pay-per-view, Dean White. But the fight was a fantastic fight, actually, and I paid for it myself. And end of the day... It were a good show, wasn't it? It got Eddie Hearn out of, out of jail, didn't it, that fight at the end of the night? The show were good. But, should it have been pay-per-view? I'm going on what the protocol was in the past. It had to be a world title fight, and it had to be a fight that you couldn't miss. Now, Parker and, Ch and White are not even from England. They're not born in England. There were no belt on the line, so how could it be pay-per-view? But, that's all in the past. Dean White's voted pound for pound element of the month for number three. So I had quite a few votes. Probably because he's been uh, very vocal on YouTube channels and he always tells it as he sees it. And in the last few days, when he's been asked questions, he's just not answered and he's gone missing and that's not good for fans. You've got to come out and be transparent, but he's carving his way in boxing, Dean, and good luck to him. He keeps it real, he's very sensible. Uh, with his man bag but good luck to him but I'd like to see him come out and speak more on this issue because it's the wall of silence is not good at all so Dean White you are helmet of the month pound for pound number three for July on Porky's Corner well done Dean so ta ta number two Spencer Fearon, Malcolm X, Spencer X, whatever they call you. Uh, Spencer Fearon came out on IFL and he said that Eddie Earn, moralistically, that is a word that he's got off Don King. Don King uses that word moralistically. Now, Eddie Earn has a moralistically uh, moral to tell Rivers about the, this test that Dillian's had. Now, fair enough. Eddie didn't do it, and Spencer Fearon came out saying it. Well done. But Spencer Fearon spoilt himself, didn't he? And that's why my inbox is chocker. He spoilt himself because he came out with, at the end of it, that Rivers had failed a drug test. Now, what he forgets is, I work in boxing and show it with Danny Sobson, and we know people in other countries who know people who know people. And these people know people. <laughs> and they know people in Canada, and we've got friends who know people out there because Carl Froch has fought people out there. Carl Froch has been out to spar it with Pascal out there, and. Let's just say there's people connected to people we know who know Yvonne Michelle and they categorically deny, deny that they failed a drug test. The British border control, boxing border control people are telling me and a friend of mine, no, Rivers did not fail a drug test. So... If he didn't fail it, why is Spencer Fearon coming out saying he did? And why is Eddie Hearn saying he did on his interview when he hasn't? It's a smokescreen to divert attention from White. They've been caught bang to rights with a test. They've not told Rivers and it's a mess. And you've got a feel for Dillian White who's took bad advice. Sky are trying to get out of it. They're saying, well, it's the board that have sanctioned it. Eddie Hearn, he's saying the board have sanctioned it, I'm only a promoter, I'm only promoting two fighters, yeah but you've got a duty of care to Rivers, haven't you Eddie? You can't put Rivers in danger. Lloyds of London are now even involved now, looking at criminal proceedings, as well as Yvonne Michelle pushing it. And, and, and you're going to have other promoters in England who don't like Eddie Hearn, not mention any names because this guy will sue my ass. Other promoters in England are going to be giving advice to Yvonne Michelle. And lawyers are going to be on retainers offering the services and advice to say, listen, Eddie Hearn is banging trouble. Eddie knows he's banging trouble. That's why they're playing for time. 
they are banging trouble and somebody is going to be a patsy but who will it be frank smith will it be frank smith at match show is frank going to go to jail he's chief executive he's not given that a title for a fucking reason is eddie going to pass the book and say i told frank smith to tell rivers we don't know do we the saga continues. It's a fucking pantomime and I love it. Because I've got a sad little life and I've got no else better to do than talking to this camera about boxing. Only joking. But no, seriously, on a brighter note, Spencer Fearing, you're a prick. I don't even like you anyway, but I wanted you to be number one, but the votes are overwhelming this time. So Spencer Fearing, Helmet of the Month, number two. Fuck off, prick. Thinking you're Malcolm X. Number one, Helmet of the Month, July 2019. The one, the only. He wears a wig. He thinks he's big. He said he. Hearn. Edward John Hearn. You are Helmet of the Month for 2019, July, you fucking scumbag. Putting a boxer in a ring who failed a drug test on PEDs, you fucking scumbag. Hey, that's just about as low as it fucking gets, in it, Eddie? How fucking low are you? How low are you? How low have you become, Eddie, now? Has greed took over you that much that you're going to do something like that? You're going to do something like that, eh? You've not only have you given Dillian White bad advice, You've put the boxing border control in a right mess. Do you know the boxing control? Some of the people at the boxing control, Eddie, and I know you're fucking listening to this. Some of them people at the boxing control are now shitting their pants. They are shitting their pants, eh? Not only did your dad fucking put a show on where Michael Watson got smashed up and board got sued, and then you ran for ills after Collins. Uh, lost his second fight to uh, after Eubank lost his second fight to Collins. Fucking match and bail out boxing. Not only did you do that and leave everybody else to pick up where the sport left off, you've just fucking torpedoed boxing border control, Eddie. Now they're fucking devastated, mate. Devastated because now, since you and fucking all your chums told them that be legal action if they cancelled the fight. They put it on, it's a mess now, isn't it? Because it's leaked out. Why did it leak out, Eddie? I'll tell you why it leaked out. Because you've made that many fucking enemies. You've made that many enemies that somebody at the Boxing Board of Control squealed on you. Yes, that's right, Eddie. There's a mole at the Boxing Board of Control. I didn't want to say it, but fuck it. I've said it now and that's that. There's a mole at the Boxing Board of Control who don't like you. And that's what happens when you rub people up the wrong way, Eddie. You see, not everybody's fucking fetched up with a silver spoon in the fucking mouth like you, are they? Do you know what I mean, Eddie? Not everybody's sat there with a fucking hand out all the time bullying people at fucking school and thinking you're ten men. Do you know what I mean? You've never had a fight in your fucking life. I've got more respect for your old man, though, because he's done it from scratch, Annie, but you haven't. You know what I mean, Eddie? As far as I'm concerned, Eddie, you're a fucking greedy little bully who's a scared little man who everywhere he goes he's got security with him. And there's a fucking good reason for that, isn't there, Eddie? There's a good reason why you've got fucking security, isn't there? So, Eddie Earn, pound for pound, number fucking one for July. Peace out, I'm out of here. Shout out to Climber Cool, my sponsors who've backed me from day one. Thank you very much to Climacool and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright, shout out to Kay Official and Rico, me pal and Terry. Alright, and Frank Smith. Peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport when the Hearns are not involved. Boom! Boom! Booyaka! You can't just turn a blind eye when someone fails a drug test because the sport becomes a mockery. The, the truth is, either way, his reputation is tarnished forever. Because it doesn't matter. You fight a drugs test, you fight a drugs test. I mean, it doesn't really matter how long he's banned for. His reputation is finished in the, in the sport. Because this is a sport where people are in there to render the other one unconscious. And to do it under the influence of steroids, a.k.a. to cheat, 
should be a criminal offence. You know, it may be a life ban is what's needed to eradicate you in the sport. There you go. Because what's the point in signing up for VADA drug testing if when you fail, everyone just says, oh, actually, don't worry about it. Yeah. You know, and, and the excuse that UCAD said it was okay is irrelevant. sometimes with bodies like USADA is, is that it's who they report the findings to. So you could have a testing agency that you're using who only give you the results, right? So say that I employ USADA or UK, right? And then it's me contracting with them. So when a fighter fails a test, who gets told? Me. So what I'm saying is, how do we know in America that there aren't people that have failed drugs tests, that have never, it's never got out. Do it. Do it. End me. End me. End me. End me. End me. Do it. I'm just talking about it. Do it. Okay. The WBC mandatory challenger Dillian White has allegedly failed a PED test. Dillian White, as reported by BoxingSing.com, has tested positive for a banned substance that um, a July 17th test came back with a positive result. Mm. Did they tell him that? But she knew he tested positive. That no, 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 Yeah, the bit, that's all, folks.